Hello everyone and welcome to the Rolling Studio. I am bringing you a video uh, for Vicky Verlano Garisto from uh, YouTube and she's also just Vicky Garisto on Facebook. She does shabby chic projects, she crochets, she does some beautiful uh, crochet pieces, ornaments, beading ornaments, little sequins, flowers. She does uh, man she does a lot of projects like um, wall hangings and and different uh, globes for Christmas and lots of different projects it's all shabby chic very uh, soft and, and pearly and beautiful that real softness that she she carries and she's done a birthday challenge and I'm running a little behind so I'm trying to catch up so I am going to start this video. She's got a birthday challenge and or had at this point. You'll be seeing this after the challenge. But she had a birthday challenge and it ended in the month of uh, December. But then she extended it due to being ill to the month of the end of the January. So what she all she wanted was a shabby chic postcard with your uh, information on the other side and uh, a piece of material that you used on the shabby chic card. Now you guys know I'm I'm like baby shabby. <laughs> I don't do shabby. Steph don't do shabby, but Steph's trying to do some shabby here and there. So this is a challenge for me. Uh, as always it is with shabby some people say I have a knack for it so be it great I love that but it's still kind of not my thing but I do try to uh, get involved and do that when I can so this is for you Vicki and you've already gotten the package by the time you've seen this video uh, but I don't know who the winner is and congrats uh, to the winner whoever they may be <clears throat> and I'm gonna get started uh, the first thing I thought I would do since I don't have a postcard I figured I would make my own uh, and I thought you know I just I go to different stores and truck stops and I always keep forgetting to grab one and I know I've got a postcard somewhere but I don't know where it is so I just figured it might be best if I just make it because you know it'll be even more personal if I make it so I'm gonna put this in time-lapse so I can find my stuff and we'll get started Let's start out with um, this 50 sheets it's a it's by color book it's a smooth cardstock it's eight and a half by eleven um, and it's 78 pound cardstock um, apparently my tore up from the floor up you know my truck beating my craft stuff up I've lost the front of the cover and apparently I cut it some at some point in time I don't know what I was doing but who knows <laughs> I probably used that for something I, I don't know but this is like a um, almost like a, a cardboard chipboard thick cardstock it's like I said 78 pounds and I'm going to do this in this color well it's an experiment but it, Oops, hold on, my camera flipped. I don't know why it does what it does. So, uh, probably because it's bouncing around in my truck, you know, that's what happens. My camera likes to flip when I'm bouncing around in the truck. Um, so, I'm going to use this. I've got a, a, a an idea in my head. Since the card's going to be shabby, and since I'm going to make it myself, I was thinking that a sepia color with maybe some colors to pop out. I might use pencil, my, my Faber-Castell uh, light fast pencils that are wax. Um, I might use, I only have 12 Prisma uh, colors, so those are wax. And uh, I had my polychromo stolen, so I can't use those. But I might use some of the Nora, Spectrum Nora markers that my friend Janie, Trucker Janie gave me. And uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm also gonna do some, I'm gonna start with some stamping, I think. I think that's what I'm gonna start with. And we're gonna go from there. So I'm gonna cut this down to, I don't really know what a postcard size is, so I'm gonna have to go look that up. And then I'll cut this down for postcard size. I'll be right back. 
Okay, so here is some interesting trivia. You may think your mail piece is a postcard because it is a single sheet of paper, but to qualify for mailing at first class mail postcard price, it must be rectangular, at least three and a half inches high by five inches long by 0.007 inches thick. But that's if you're mailing it. This will be not like typically postcarded mailed. But it also says what is the normal size of a postcard, although the general consensus is that the dimensions of an international standard postcard are A6 size, which is 148 by 105 millimeter or 5.8 by 4.1 inches, the Universal uh, Postal Union UPU has defined postcards as having the following max, maximum and minimum si sizes for their members. So it's an A6, just FYI, trivia, uh, knowledge. So if anybody ever asks you, you got it. <laughs> okay, well, and, and it, I guess it can be any size because it says there's a five by seven postcard require extra postage. And I think that's what I'm gonna do mine in is a five by seven. I want it to have enough space to do some stuff. So I'm gonna cut this card down to five by seven. Okay, so I got out my uh, We Are Memory Kippers uh, paper trimmer and uh, scoreboard. So, and I'm glad I still have this because my, my uh, other you know guillotine uh was was stolen so this gives me both the both the, the cutter and the scoreboard so that's kind of nice so i'm gonna go ahead oops let me lift this back up and put this down i want to score this at seven and then we're gonna do this at five so we will have a five by seven sepia colored postcard base okay so that's a five by seven so I pulled out the only uh, distress oxides I have and distress stains that I have and so I did a little card here to see what they would look like on here just to give it an overview this one here is the vintage photo one option. This one here is the walnut stain. And this one here is the, um, what is this one? The antique linen. Uh, antique linen's fairly light. So, I mean, they're pretty close in stains. So, I mean, if I wanted to use uh, any of this to darken it in any way shape or form which I might I haven't totally decided um, those are the uh, distress oxide sprays um, I'm going to even though this is wet I'm going to test this fossilized amber with a stamp Just so I can get an idea if this is going to stamp nicely on on this cardstock, being that it's wet, I don't know how to do. I did not break out my my dryer, and I need to, and I will before I continue at some point. But I'm just testing, which I never do. I always just go for it but I figured this being so special and all I better see how it goes well that's kind of cute and it, it shows let me get these out of the way so it quits shadowing let me zoom in it shows it pretty good on there huh that's pretty cool I like that so it looks like the fossilized amber shows up nicely let me just clean that off and I am going to try the vintage photo in stamp form. You know, I don't have a very big one, but this ought to do. It'll be a little easier than trying to do it, you know, the hard way. As long as there's enough on there. I don't want 
want them drying out. Lord knows I don't use them enough. Let's see what this looks like on and over the stain. Hmm, quite dark. You know, the only option I really have with that is if I do go into coloring without lines with my markers and I'll have to test that or with my um, I got some stays on ink I could just black line it okay what did I do with my stamp there it is <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on and I mean black is black you know, we all know what a line out looks like but you know might as well just test the waters see how I like it there we go let me back that back off okay so uh, it's quite dark also so this is a more permanent uh, I may not get that off my stamp not without some alcohol and I can do that in a little bit I'm just gonna do it for this very moment so looks like this one is the best if I'm gonna color and be able to see what I'm coloring uh, then again I may just leave it like that let's see what it looks like just plain might as well start with this I don't want to have to change my choice in cardstock, but I might have to. We'll see. Well, it looks better. You definitely see it better. And the stays on is permanent, and I like that too. I may just do the black line, I don't know. But, we'll see. Um, let me go ahead and hit it with the Distress Against No Stain Background. You can definitely see it better definitely see it better so take that right off of there and again this will probably pop out even nicer I'm gonna have to make some decisions here really never get to play with my distress and I'm, I'm kind of enjoying it I don't do the stamping stuff often. I mean, it just moves into something else. Uh, oddly, it doesn't look as good, does it? It looks like it did better. It popped out better on that wet surface than it did on the dry surface. But that might be good for coloring. And that is some tedious coloring. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to have to think this one through. And we'll go from there and we'll see what happens. So now I'm just going to decide which stamps I want to use. I definitely am going to use these Graphic 45 stamps that I have. Um, they're in bad shape. I'll tell you, they get beat up in my truck. <laughs> but these are definitely Graphic 45 stamps um, that I got when I went to the scrapbook.com show or the in Dallas, the... Uh, the art show so um, this one here is called the it's called time to celebrate I do not know the official names of these but this is tassels pretty self-explanatory but I'm gonna assume this is the birthday celebration so uh, because that's what it is it's like a vintagey uh, birthday celebration I think this is what I'm gonna go with and uh yeah i really like this this woman here but uh, I, I may still use her i don't know 
but all in all, I did have one other one, but it was the masquerade party, and I don't think Vicky's doing masquerading. <laughs> Unless we don't know about her and Joe. <laughs> Sorry, Vicky. <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> you know me. All right, so let me get started. And I'm also picked out this little Prima 6x6 card that I was thinking um, to use part of it on. I may just cut this little this little part out here and do some fussy cutting there and put it there on the on the cardstock. I think that would look really cool. So I'm gonna move on with time lapse and if I need to I'll stop and, and talk about something that you know we come up on. Alright, talk to you guys in a minute. Enjoy the music. Uh, hopefully this is the music that I have uh, created. Most likely this is the music I will be putting in this video. If not it's just because I ran out of time but if it's titled it's mine if it's not it's from my phone so i will talk to you guys in a bit So I'm not really liking how dark that really turned out. I should have used the light one, but I'm gonna try to work and not have to do this over again. I'm gonna try to work this out. So I'm gonna pull out my Faber-Castell 48 Gold Favors. Um, they are a light fast um, wax pencil, kind of comparable to the Prisma pencil. And there's 48 colors. This is the complete set. And I love these pencils. Uh, I wish I still had my Faber-Castell Polychromos because they're more of an oil base, which might be better on the situation that I'm dealing with right now. But we're going to try it out and see what happens. So let's get to it.
why I really, really, really am liking this. It's a bit grungy. It's not shabby chic, it's grungy. It's almost to a steampunk point. <laughs> I don't do shabby. <laughs> so I'm going to have to brighten this up. It's so dark. Mother was right, I am dark. Wow. I'm loving it, but it's very steampunkish. I might have to hold on to this one for somebody else's birthday. Because this is grunge and this is vintage steampunk. <laughs> Not what I was going for. I mean, I love it. I love it. But it's not shabby chic. It's it's definitely. Yeah, I saw it totally different in my head. I saw it totally different in my head. Do you like these little dots? I got these little acrylic dots from Tuesday morning. I don't know which one or what, but uh, it was so cool. I found them and I had to have them. I wish now I'd have got two of them, but. I only grabbed the one. But I love it. But it's it's steampunkish. It's vintage. She came out pretty cool. I kinda like it. But it I don't know if this is gonna pass for shabby. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. All right, I'm just going to continue to move forward on this and see if I can't brighten it up with some shabby stuff. But uh, if not, it is what it is. It'll be what it'll be. And I'll have to decide whether I start a new one and hold on to this for someone else or something else. <laughs> Darn you, Vicky. I told you I wasn't shabby. Um, I'm a little tired because I've already done the video. And... Stephanie don't do shabby chic. I'm just, I, I don't. And when I do, it's always a challenge. Well, my shabby chic first video, video number one, which unfortunately will not be seen because it was kind of cool. Then again, I might save it and just put it out there as a <laughs> from shabby to steampunk look. Anyways, this was the card I ended up making. And I love it. But darn it. It's more steampunkish than it is shabby. I even hand colored this with pencils. My Faber Castell pencils. Let me see if I can get a better view close up. There we go. I highlighted, I stamped what stays on with the Graphic 45 stamps. All this is Graphic 45. And it, this is a clock in Roman numeral. It's just hard to see. There you go. And I did some awesome background effects with some leafing paint. Uh, the precious metals. And I did it in copper. And then I actually took some copper leafing and added over on top of it. And I stamped her. And I did all these little, you know, test pieces for... How I was gonna do this on this chipboard style, cardboard style, um, card stock. And I was really happy with doing that. And then as I got busy, I wanted to highlight her instead of just a black and white. And I did it over, I stamped over the copper. So it kind of made it difficult. And I thought I'd get my Faber Castell pencils out and highlight her. Well, I love it. I do. I love it. And it turned out great. But this is not shabby chic. This has turned into a more steampunkish look, even though that's not what you know it was meant to be. So it went grungy on me. <laughs> I like grunge, and apparently me came out in this project. So now I'm gonna start over, and I'm gonna quit rambling, and I'm gonna put this in time lapse, and I'm gonna this take two. Take two. Uh, we're going to try to go shabby and I'm going to start out this time with, I'm just going to do a 6x6 six six card. So I was wanting to cut it off to a 4x6, but I don't know if I want to lose that. It may just have to be a 6x6 six six postcard. 
little unusual on the size. Oh, and that was the other thing. I gave some great information about postcard size. I read. I may put that video out there. I'm just not going to repeat everything I said. But I may put the video out. So maybe I'll just put the grunge, you know, fail. <laughs> the shabby chic fail video out. But um, I'm going to start with this. And this is going to be my base. So it's changed everything. So I'm going to put it time lapse and try to make this video not as long as the last one. Okay, I will talk to you guys in a little bit.
Okay, wow, what a process. Um, I think this is a whole different ball game than what I started out with, don't you think? We went from what I thought might be shabby chic, which was really grunge and steampunkish, which I'll use somewhere. Kind of hate the happy birthdays there, but that's okay. I'm sure I'll find somebody that likes steampunk that I'll be giving this to, or maybe I'll make something out of it and do a giveaway. So y'all let me know what you think. I thought it was pretty cool. However, voila, voila, it is finito. I have what turned out to be more of a, um, <laughs> a wall hanging. <laughs> uh, but here's the deal. Let me give you the close-up first. These are the little pony and parlor beads that I melted at home. There's a video and I'll link it there. Uh, for you to go watch how I did that and then I picked up these little guys from I think they were from Tuesday morning little droplets. I sure wish I would have got another set but They were so cool. I had to have it. So anyways um, All of the shabbiness that I have here was gifted to me by either I believe the yellow was from Pamela Oxendine and I think uh, Vicki I think I even used this this is from you and um, I think some of these were from Rosie's kit um, Rosie Posey Crouch Shack and then there was some that uh, were gifted from uh, an old acquaintance and then this this trim here which i love came from uh mona mona mcgabby mona mcgabby mona mcgabby oh, shoot i can't even remember mona mcgabby um she has a store i will try to link her um information in the uh description box below uh, mona mcgabby that's that's what it is and uh, I won a gift and I never ever got a chance to uh, show my winnings and I apologize for that Mona McGabby um, Morena I believe is her name and I do apologize for that and just incredible crazy over the last couple of years so just never got around to it but when I use it I will try to remember to always state where I got this from so this little trim here was Mona McGabby these rows here these flowers here uh, this was from Rosie's Craft Shack uh, she had gifted me I think from her at one point I didn't get to do a video for her either well, I did and then the video got messed up I don't remember what happened and uh, this was some trim that came in a bohemian pack of uh, scraps that she was giving away. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of nice scraps in there. Um, uh, I don't remember where the butterflies came from or the trim. I mean, I got it from either an old acquaintance or I don't think I got this from you, Vicki. But I may have. <laughs> Um, but there's, it seems like there was one other person. I couldn't find, um, I have another pink, uh, scraps that I got from Rosie, but it came from by way of my friend Janie. She gifted that to me, and it wasn't in this buckets that I had down, and I've trapped myself, so I couldn't get upstairs and look. But anyway, I used the Prima paper. I added a little bit of song paper. Uh, didn't do too much on the front, just a couple of little uh, graphic 45 stamping, which I love. I, I just love that one. And I like that it's subtle. Here, it was uh, pretty bold, but I colored it with my Faber-Castell pencil. I still love this one, you guys. I <laughs> do. I guess I'm more of a grunge person, but I couldn't help but make it a little more colorful than just shabby, which is the muted colors. 
Uh, I know that Vicki likes these blues and these other pastel -y colors, so I know she won't mind. Uh, this little green trim also came from Rosie's Craft Shack, and it has the little leaves. They're so cute. I like those. I'm finally getting to use some of this stuff, and that's what I've been needing to do. Now, let me just turn it over real quick. This was just some basic Dollar Tree trim, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. This was the uh, part of the front side of this, the top side of this card. And I just made a little pocket because here I'm going to put another actual postcard in here. This was supposed to be the postcard, but it became a postcard holder. So I still got to make a postcard. <laughs> How funny. But if you look at this back here, this is um, my handmade faux, my faux handmade paper. And I did this technique by using uh, various inclusions, uh, different roses that I dried and petals and flowers that I dried. I also opened up a bag of tea, not your typical tea, but like um, I believe I used, let me back this out, this Revolution, the Honey Caramel Herbal Tea, and I left it raw. And it smelled so good once I ironed the, uh, once it dried, I ironed the tea. And uh, I need to drink this as well. I mean, but, uh, <laughs> um, inside of there is this wonderful smelling tea. And I put those little tidbits in there too. So that's inside of there. I got some black string uh, and some different paper just to throw some color and I will be doing a tutorial on this and I got this idea from Treasure Books Natasha I believe is her name Natasha from Treasure Books and I just loved it and I had to try it I've made handmade paper before it is such a fun process but it's long it's messy and you know I gotta be at home to do it so this I can do in the truck and I was so thrilled and excited to do it so uh, I incorporated my handmade paper in there. And you know what? I think I'm going to gift uh, Vicki the rest of this, or at least a piece of it. I want to keep one piece of it because I really meant to copy this paper before I cut it, but I needed it, so it got used. And I really kind of wished I'd have thrown that in the back of there. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. I'll just put it in the little pocket right here it's not a deep pocket but uh, maybe I'll turn it that way so that it looks good from this side <laughs> and you can see my edges I didn't clean my edges so she can just cut that off um, but I, I've got this beautiful uh, copper clothespin from Hobby Lobby with a 50% off the Sewology and I was going to include a couple of these black ones for her as well, just so she can have some in her project. And I'll see if I might have another one of these to spare to give to you to use, Vicki. I'm not sure. But uh, anyways, the handmade paper was a blast. I used alcohol inks. I meant spray inks, the shimmer, the angel tattered, tattered angels, some string my dried flowers and I also picked up some lavender and other things like that. I didn't use them in this one because I didn't have them but I do now and I'm also going to gift you this tea. I hope you like it. Um, I really hate it because I get it from the truck stop and they stopped selling the Revolution brand. They've gone to another brand, but I didn't. I don't want the other brand. I love this brand, and I wish that I had the oolong tea, or I'd I'd send you one of those. I love the oolong tea, but um, this one here is the English breakfast black tea, and this one here is the honey caramel herbal tea. So, the honey bush rather, and so I'm going to include that as well. So she's going to have some paper and some tea. And eventually a, a postcard back there somewhere. <laughs> uh, 
this was difficult for me. I'm not going to lie. I really had, it was a challenge for me. But all in all, it's done. And I love it. And Vicki, I hope you love it. And you would have already seen all this by the time you get it. I hope, I hope, I hope. Because uh, I'm going to try to hold on to this video till you receive it. And then I got you a few little goodies in here. Um, and uh, that's it, you guys. I'll try to take a few photographs to put at the end of this video so you get a closer shot. But other than that, you guys have a blessed day. Uh, God be with you. And in the name of Jesus. And I hope you have a beautiful, blessed day. And don't forget to subscribe, comment. I really would love the thumbs up and the comments and the subscriptions to, to come on through. I'm almost at my thousand. And I'd really, really appreciate if you guys would help me get there. So if you watch this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe. And uh, that way I can just have a thousand, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a wonderful night evening and a day and an afternoon. Bye-bye.